Hey everybody, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to episode 10 of Stationers Europa, which originally streamed live on Twitch. So now with this composite door closed behind me, uh, there isn't base to vent out. Makes me way more comfortable. With that said, I'm still going to use a little pick here because I don't want to... I don't want to muscle through the project and remove more snow than I need to. Oh, yep. I... think I... Uh, no, it's still airtight. It's just like... I don't know. That was weird. Yeah, no, it's still airtight. That was strange. Woo! Splat. Well, alright, that works. Let's close that behind me. Oh, you know what? I think it uh, it goes down pretty far. I think that's what's going on. There's like a crevasse down there or something. I don't know. So I did just leak out a whole lot of base oxygen, but, uh, you know, that's fine. There's plenty of oxygen where that came from. Whole planet's oxygen. Okay, so we have the airlock now. I can pop this back open. And I'm probably going to want to... Um... No, I don't need to run heaters. I mean, now that I'm not actively farming, it's not that big of a deal. But it's it's just a, a point of concern. So, sensors. We're going to have the gas sensor. Oh, another thing I have to do for this project here is to put it on its separate APC. Probably. So we'll have a gas sensor. And the console. Um, these pass events are a little different because... I'm not entirely sure I want to set up the pass events. So... Yeah. Maybe I could put it here. I'm gonna have to figure out the, the venting situation because it's gonna be it's it's not identical to my last one. But I don't think pipes can go through the I don't know, they can't go through the airlocks. So I can put one vent there and one vent there. That will work. And then two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But the ninth. So we'll go with eight then. There's one pass event, and I'll do the same thing on the other side over there. All right. My only worry is that the, uh, the pipes, because they're not insulated, are interacting with the external temperature because they're built into the frame. But I could stick a steel frame back there and uh, mitigate that. And maybe I'll do that just um, just as a precaution. I think it's a pretty wise one. Uh, I need another piece of glass for that. And then a whole lot of cabling, which I currently don't really have. So let's go get the glass and the... Uh, and the steel sheets. So two more steel sheets. One glass. I put my silicon. There it is. Oh, 
My battery, my kit battery's topped up, so I'm gonna turn on the space heaters again. So yeah, I'll put in a frame in this location, and then I can just get rid of this uh, window. Should be fine. Green light. Still good. So what I'm doing here is I'm just making sure that the air that's in the the plumbing vents don't interact with the cold European air so that um, I'm not like super cooling anything accidentally. And just as a precaution, because sometimes the pipes will interact when they're built uh, on the border there. I don't even mind the window. All right, what's left now is to set up a power controller and to run power down there. So the reason I want a second power controller, and I'm gonna actually build the power controller off the trunk line uh, rather than my local line. So let me explain this a little bit more just to make sure that you fully understand. The, um, the heavy watt cable here is like the trunk can hold a lot more power and it is supplied by my power generators. And then every small cable that you see in the base right now is drawn off of this power controller, which has, which limits the amount of, it actually doesn't limit, but um, it separates the grids out from one another. So what I want is I want the airlock and then the ogre that is beyond this door or eventually will be built beyond that door to be on a different net, a power network. That way I can turn off the power network if I'm not using it, and it's separated, it's logic is separated, everything is separated. So uh, so let's go get my power controller here. And this power controller I could stick like, um, I w it should be in the base because batteries drain power very, very rapidly in cold environments. So I'm gonna stick it here and I'm going to run the heavy watt cables to it, which means I'm going to need a whole lot of heavy watt cables running all the way out there. And then from that power controller, I'll wire up the airlock and the ogre and all that stuff. Also, I know it's aesthetically ugly by some people's standards. I like to... Um, I like to expose my wires so that I can see if they ever burn out. Uh, with some exceptions, like these, this wire right here is not exposed, but um, that will carry eventually carry power. So the other, there's a, several other things that I'm gonna want. I'm gonna, probably gonna want another large battery. Gold, copper, steel. And I might need more copper and gold at the end of this. Yeah, you can also, um, you can also use transformers to limit the amount of power draw. APCs alone won't do that. They're power controllers, but they're not. Uh, to be safe, you can use transformers as well. So if I was smart, I could use a small transformer off of this uh, power cable, but um, I haven't drawn more power than it's able to provide. So uh, the next part of this is heavy cables. 
and I can only make 20 or I can make 52 of them so that should be enough to get cabling over there I think but I'm also gonna want some normal cables as well because then I need to wire this entire rim up and maybe Come on. All right, I'll use the mega drill. Yeah, whatever. I, I I can I can live with it. Uh, is there a X-ray HUD? that Stationers has to show the outline of pipes and wires and walls? No, there is not. Uh, the way to do it, if you have some, like let's say you have a power break, uh, the way you'd have to do it is to grab your network analyzer and see how right now it's, uh, it shows how many devices are on the network. You'd basically just run around to see if there was any breaks in that network. It. It's not, uh, it's not that high tech. So highly advise you not to, to rip it up like that. Yeah, or debug. <laughs> All right, had some previous heavy cables. So maybe 32 is enough. And then with the rest of the copper I have, I'll make 26 regular cables. So I can leave this printing as I leave the base. And my kit battery is a little low, just to point that out. Making sure not to use up the last of my power. So then this network here needs to travel over to that APC. Probably don't have enough. You can see why they have the wireless power thingies that they introduced, the um, the microwave transmitters. Because if you had really long projects like this, it becomes very resource intensive to connect two distant buildings together with power. Oh, I just barely. Oh my goodness. It is connected! <laughs> Not a single cable left over. Morty, thank you for the resub, by the way. Isn't that the generator network? It is. It is. On purpose. But by design. Did they fix the infinite power god? I have no idea. I haven't really even used the power transmitters. So you tell me, man. Or Cheese will tell you, and Cheese says yes. Not in this version, yeah. I'm not using the up-to-date version at the moment. I'm using the stable version, not the beta version. All right, I am officially out of copper. I used the last of it. Uh, but this cable now holds power when I turn on the master, which means that I can open and close doors. Also means I'm getting closer to uh, 
airlocking. But I think I am going to require more copper. Before I do that, I, I want to ask one thing. Should I keep working on the tunnel or change projects? Just figured I'd ask in case you want me to pivot to something else or you're like, hey, tunnel away, keep go, go, go. I'm happy with either. I just, you know, want to make sure. Okay, uh, just about everything is, um, is hooked on. What I don't have, on the other hand, is the passive vents and the plumbing for the out vent yet. Uh, for that, I'm going to want, um, I'm going to want another steel frame so I can stick it on a frame up there. And I think I ran out of steel frames. So let me print up a steel frame. And some sheets. But I have the passive vent and everything I need on me. wall kits and plastic I can put away. I don't need that at the moment. Still have green. Alright, let's go. Oh. I am using more... Yeah, I'm currently using more power than uh, I'm generating. That's okay. So this thing isn't hooked up to a kit battery. Which means um, when it is not, when I'm not producing enough power, it uses the battery. I could put a kit battery here in the future and hook the heavy watt cable to a kit battery. But because I don't have a lot proposed to go... Oh. It is cold in here. Uh, because I don't have anything proposed to go over here yet, I'm not worried about that at the moment. Uh, where's that frame? Alright, so you guys want me to keep working. Got it. Yeah, it is... It must be atmospheric here because, um... Because it's very cold in here, so I'm assuming that there's some sort of breach. Which is fine. I, I'll... Uh, what I will do is... The tunnel itself will... I'll try to do terrain only. But until I get to the tunnel, everything will be welded steel. Now, I, what I could do is I could heat this tunnel um, the same way I heat the base with the furnace. Um, that would uh, that would definitely make it nice and hot. So I'm not that worried about heating a, a tunnel once I'm done. So there we go. Now we have all the necessary components in order to get the, um, the airlock running. All I need is the data disk. Which I left over here. How do I feel about the game's electrical nonsense? Uh, don't know what you mean. Oh, I also need a labeler. So 
so that I know which door is which. How's my labeler battery? 100%? 99? Cool. Alright, so this is the inside composite door. The outside composite door. The inside act event. Outside active, outside active vent, airlock console, airlock gas sensor. Uh, the internal KPA, I think I'll do 40, and the external will be 20. That's how I set it up previously. So, exterior, door, Interior door, exterior, interior, gas sensor. Done. Cool. So at this point, what I need is a whole bunch more steel so that I can frame this up and then put the ogre down. I think I also want to go down one more level to be so the tunnel is a little bit more subterranean so that I'm not um, glitching into the uh, the outside. If I turn on my mining goggles, you can kind of check the level that I'm at. So stairs, steel. And this is still technically airtight because... I can tell because um, it would be at 47 or 6 kPa, which is exterior pressures. But because it's not 47, it means uh, it's it's still airtight a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and get ready for some mining. Because I am basically out of steel. How much steel do I have left? 32? Yeah, it's not going to be enough. So I'm going to go for more. No storms coming, so let's go. Uh, So I don't really care about the electrical nonsense... It's a game, so I don't think it really needs to take into consideration AC and DC, as doing so doesn't make the game any better. I'm more of like, um, I'm a, I'm a player that doesn't really care about the realism so much as is it fun. So would having, would, would requiring the player to care about AC and DC make the game more fun? If not, doesn't bo bother me that it's not included. I think a game like this is already uh, complex enough that throwing additional complexity at the player is just going to put off enough of the player base that it, won't, it will only get played by people who engineer by day and want, for some reason or other, to engineer by night. <laughs> Which to say, a commercial failure. And I don't think the developers want a commercial failure. You have to hit a, a happy medium in order for it to be playable and enjoyable. You know, I, I feel like this game and games like Kerbal Space Program do a pretty good job of flirting with that medium. If Kerbal Space Program was any more realistic, uh, it would be less of a game and more of a chore. And same with this. And same with any, any game that um, has heavy amounts of engineering. You know, if you, you need to have a degree to play the game, um, it's, it's not so much a game. S same could be said of the games that are, like, heavily economic. Uh, like EVE Online, for instance. I, I was never really even on online player, but from what I know about it, you know, it's uh, it's a game where you're accompanying you is Excel spreadsheets and databases and infographics and 
And it's like, okay, well, is this a game? Or... Or is it not? So I'm, I'm looking to get, uh, let's say, just another batch of 200 steel. So 150 iron should be fine. Yeah, the game allows you to live on Venus, and its pressure isn't Venus pressures. It's obviously simulated, because none of the, uh, the game mechanics would actually allow for Venus habitation. Because nothing is rated for that pressure other than, like, steel frames. And steel frames and on the surface of Venus, I think, would melt. On real Venus? It's funny, because uh, a lot of the comments that uh, I reply to on YouTube, in this series and in previous ones, I find myself just going, uh, why is it the way it is? Because it's a video game. So don't lose sight of that. I'm about to lose daylight, so best I don't get too lost. Venus is only 465 Celsius. Uh, but at that pressure, I, maybe the pressure doesn't mess with steel. What I do know is all electrical components would get absolutely fried. It's what... It's what's so prohibitive about exploring the surface of Venus. The atmosphere of Venus, on the other hand, maybe uh, humans will live on it someday. I think that's a lot more realistic than Mars. Isn't it nice that I have that little, like, alert light? I know the battery lights are there, but sometimes they get covered up. Spinning gizmo. Oh, I also needed copper. Like, bad, bad, badly. There's a, there's a copper node all the way down there, but I'm lazy. I don't want to go deep spelunking. Maybe I have to. <laughs> I've seen a whole lot of copper anywhere else. Imagine if I didn't have these glasses. The mining phase of this uh, stream would be uh, much longer. Alright, lead. Gold. What is C? Is that your... Oh, that's U for uranium. God. Uh, Alright, I'll... Uh, this, is, this will work. Oh, I've already been here. That sucks. But there's still plenty left. True Der Jericho, thank you for the resub. Welcome to Europa. It also wouldn't be terrible for me to get a little bit of extra uh, iron either, because I was pretty low on iron as well. So that's 150 copper. Yeah, let's go for a little bit of iron before I go home. Iron is pretty plentiful, though. Easy to find. So I'm going to make a batch of steel, a batch of copper, a batch of iron, and that should finish off the ogre project. With any luck. Alright, 
I deem that good enough. Why is that not charging? Huh. I'll have to tinker with that later. Should be. I don't know why it isn't. Alright, so here we go. Furnace ready to go. Let's do 10. Way overkill, but it's because I'm doing a big batch. And Do we decide what's going to be built under the mountain? Um, you guys haven't, but I have. <laughs> Alright, there's my batch of steel. Because I have PTSD, I looked at the green light, I still don't have any storms on the horizon. I will do iron next. Copper. I'll keep you running a little bit, little bit longer. Oh, it's charging now. Okay. It was just a temporary thing. Alright, let's get some steel frames to set up the ogre. I'll print... I don't know how many. Uh, maybe 20 of them? And then I'm also going to need copper cabling, because I ran out. Treats. Sure thing. Alright, 20 should be alright for now. I 
I also wanted another stair to go even lower. Alright, that's enough for now. So let's go get the stairs. You like this track? Yeah, me too. And then these sheets. I don't believe I have any spare sheets at the moment. So to, to weld the sheets that I have so far solid, I would need at least 26, so I'll print up 26. Oh, what? Why do I have my old mining drill here? I don't know. So I'll build stairs here. And I'm not too worried about um, keeping this all pressurized because it's on the other side of my uh, airlock. So what I'm planning on doing is installing installing the, um, the steel walls after the fact. So I'm just going to sort of dig willy-nilly and then slap steel to make it airtight. So let's weld those. As you can see, this is going to require a fair bit of steel. But this is so that the future uh, t ogre tunnel has a greater chance of being uh, airtight once it's done. I could save on steel to use walls instead of frames. I actually like the aesthetics of frames, but you're right, I could. The, the advantage of frames is that, um, is that they are very durable. And I've been known to destroy things terribly. It's weird to be in a low-pressure environment. This is like the lowest-pressure environment I've been in, other than when the uh, airlock's cycling. Which, that, you could argue, is not really an environment, given the lack of pressure. So this is sort of the depth of the tunnel. And then here uh, is where the ogre will be set up. Uh, so I want a frame in this spot. 
and then we'll put one down below as well. Get those last two welds done, and then I'll, I'll start to work on setting up the ogre itself. So what the ogre does, as I mentioned before, it's just like a boring tool. It just bores into wherever you build it straight out. That's all it does. It does net uh, resources, but it's, I wouldn't say like all that useful as a mining mechanism because um, it doesn't pivot or anything like that. All right, so this is the platform to which I'm going to build the, the the borer. So let's go get the ogre itself. Oh, what tool am I missing here? Oh, my welder. There we are. And hook it up with, uh, with cabling. Still working on an original tomato soup. Has lasted me a long time. Still have a decent amount of water left. So here's the... No, it's a salt generator. Here's the ogre. As you can see, it's kind of a big boy. So it's going to require um, some space to build it, right? So I'm going to need more frames uh, where it's going. So let me print up a few more um, horizontal auto miner. Wow, that's what they call it. A few more frames here. I'm going to do maybe nine frames. And I might actually remove the one that was on the ceiling. You guys really gave me a big project to work on, huh? I haven't had a storm in a while. So another reason to use the frames themselves is you can place things on frames where you can't place them on walls. So the walls would be better for the walls and the roof ceiling, which maybe I add later in the future, but the bottom needs to be frames to make it easier to, to construct the bun. So just two more. Alrighty. Getting pretty close to what we need. There's not a lot of air in this tunnel to even pressurize it. Which I think is why it's so quiet, too. I don't have my mining belt on, so it doesn't automatically grab ores. I 
probably also should have charged my arc welder because it's low on batteries. Don't forget, you also need the spot for the uh, ore to come back. Yeah, that's why I'm making like a kind of a larger platform so that the the ore has somewhere to go. So I think I'm going to build it there, uh, and I just need a mine out around it so you can actually see what the heck's going on. I also need to construct it with uh, electrical parts and, and all the other requirements. But we're getting pretty close. So. Around where I'm deploying it is going to be ugly uh, because, you know, I'm just crudely mining. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll build this to make it look like a, like a train station or something like that. And then to have a, a you know, we'll eventually have a, a clean tunnel that the ogre will make. So all this is just it being crude. And I'm not trying to put a silo down. It's just... This isn't for mining purposes, it's just for the, uh, just for the tunnel. Alright, so it wants ogres. In order to make an ogre, I'm going to need electrical parts. What else am I going to need for this? Uh, two sheets iron, two sheets steel, and one sheet electrical. So let's fulfill that requirement. I have the steel sheets, obviously, but I need the electrical sheets and the iron sheets. So the electrical parts, easy to make on an electronics printer. Not too pricey. Also might not be a terrible idea to preemptively run power through the airlock so I can grab it from the other side. So there we go. I don't think I'm going to have enough cables to connect to it, but at least we have the... Oh, 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 oops. I uh, added to the network as I was uh, pressurizing the airlock, so it canceled the uh, pressurize cycle. Yeah, I need to recharge the arc to swap the battery with the uh, one of the kit batteries, or one of the um, APC batteries. So now we're at a whopping 8 or 9 kPa. Let's cancel pressurization. This is brutal. I might want to vent this area to Europa to actually fill it with oxygen so that I have oxygen in here to pressurize, depressurize, and also heat eventually. So that might be in my best interest. But let's get this, um, let's get this built first. And iron sheets... And steel sheets. So there's the ogre. The way this works is you power it up here with the power port, and then this mining truck goes outwards, mines, and then when it fills up, it comes out and it pops uh, ore out of the export. And to activate it, you just hit the go button. It's very, very simple with the on-off switch. That That's it. That's... The ogre in a nutshell. Uh, before I do the first ogre launch, I actually do want to add some Europa air. And unfortunately for me, this is airtight because I built too well. This shouldn't be airtight. 
Oh, what? That's airtight right there? Okie dokie. I could fix that. Seriously? Game? Ser seriously? <laughs> uh huh. How about now? There we go. The magical steel frame that held back Europa's air. I, I think what I'll do is um I'm just going to keep this frame on me because this is a... Well, it's never going to be able to pressurize the airlock. Um, yeah, let me switch which one is removed for a, a bit. And then once we're ready to, in the future, to pressurize the airlock, I'll fix it. So this one get removed. So now this will fill up with Europa air. So that, um, so it's not so vacuum sealed. I need a few more cables and that will be it for the tunnel. So with that, what am I working on next? Cause I'm about to start uh, ogre mining and the ogre will take a little while. So it's something that doesn't happen overnight. Um, and I should periodically collect the materials that the ogre mines up. But I'm ready to take on new projects, so there you go. Have yourself a good old vote on what I do next. So now it will be able to pressurize a lot more easily because it's pulling from Europa, not pulling from a finite supply of air in this, uh, in this, like, tunnel. Thank you for tuning in to Stationers Europa, which originally streamed live on Twitch April 14th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below, but please keep in mind that I was streaming with the no backseating tag enabled, which means that I'm not really looking to be told what to do or how to do it. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you like this series, please vote for it when it comes up in the polls. If you're interested to vote in the polls, the best way to do it is to join Discord. Rodamont.com or the description of this video have a link to Discord, and on Discord, you can sign up for announcements when polls go live. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel. I'll catch you next episode. Stay safe out there, fellow stationers.